Web Systems Week 2 Operating Systems, Part 4, Complexity. Last lecture we looked at file systems and file storage and how files are allocated. And we used this because we needed to worry about how files are stored on size um, websites. Google being 200 terabytes, for example, or even Chris's laptop at 178 gigabytes. Where do these files get stored and how do they get stored efficiently? So what's the best way to store files data? We looked at the three common types of file allocation, continuous, chained or linked, and indexed. Let's assume the best equals the most efficient allocation method. There's two ways to look at efficiency. Number one, is it space-wise, is it efficient on the disk, or time-wise? And you've seen from the three animations of contiguous, linked, and indexed, they have different types of efficiency. So let's take a look at complexity theory, which relates to this thing. What's complexity theory? Basically, that's how long does it take to solve a problem. And you can see that through the Wikipedia entry if you have time to look at it. So in terminology of um, file systems, we want to know how, many t how much time does it take or how many reads are required off a physical disk to find a particular block of a file. That's what we will simply use that as a definition of efficiency. So here we are. Let n be the number of blocks in a file. For example, 10,000. Contiguous turns out to be about one. Remember it's random access, so it only takes one read, actually physically read, a block on a contiguous file. Chained and length is roughly proportional to the length of the file. And index is, is logarithmic. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Now this is funny O symbol. That's called big O notation. And you can look it up on Wikipedia if you wish. A bit hard to read that article. But essentially it says, another way to look at it is the order. What's the magnitude of the number of reads that we have to look at? Let's take a look at a few examples. Let's look at our first case. The chained allocation. Key thing is, chained is what we call a constant read. Because it's completely what we call random accessible. So all you need to know is where the first block is and which number of block you want to read. So if we read block 6, we say, what's our starting block number, which is 1? We say we want the 6th block. And we actually subtract 1 because we actually want to read the current block, not the block after. So let's add it up. 1 plus 6 minus 1 is 6. So if we want to read it, we read it once. Now what happens if it's block the starting block is number 10? Simple, our calculation becomes this. 10 plus 6 minus 1, that's 10, plus 6 minus 1, and we look up block 16. So if we start off with 10, we'll assume that's block 16. Again, one read. Very quick and efficient. Let's look at the linked version. Now this is called ON which means it's proportional directly to the size of the number of the size of number of blocks in the file. So in this case, you actually have to read it in a certain way. You need to know the first block, then you need the second block, third block, fourth block, fifth block, sixth block. You have to read sequentially. So the problem is, if we have 10,000 blocks, that means the best case is 1, and the worst case is 10,000. Not necessarily the best. We actually take an average. So the best case, the average reads would have in a file would be n on 2. So in the case of 10,000, it will be 5,000. 5,000 reads to read the middle of a file of 10,000 blocks. Simple as that. The final and the uh, indexed version is what we call logarithmic. It's proportional to the shortest path in a tree. And uh, logarithmic, it depends. I'll talk about that in a moment. But essentially what we're reading is the depth of the tree. So in this case, we've got three levels. The maximum of reads you'll ever need in this, this particular file is three. If it's in the first block, which obviously it can't be, it'll take two reads to read any of these blocks of data. Okay, we read one, we read two. Two blocks. If the file's more than this particular case, more than five more than five blocks, let's say the sixth block, 
Well, in this case, I actually put 21. Just assume we've got a few dots here somewhere. It needs three reads. Once, two, three. So only three reads are needed. So it's very efficient in that respect. Okay, so I'll read the index. I'll read the data block. That's two reads. In the third case, I'll read block 25. One, two, three reads. Quite simple. Now the question is, is why is it called logarithmic? Well, that's because we're effectively doing a thing called a binary search. You can Google it, or Wikipedia, the binary search. The idea is, is that most of the data pointing to the next block will be in the first block you find, or the second block. So, in this particular case, I've got probably close to, say, 100 blocks. The maximum of reads is 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's very efficient. I've got a max of five reads. So it's the depth or the height of the tree, whichever way you draw it. And complexity in a nutshell. Now, of course, if you draw complexity even long term, it turns out if you're running what we call order one or constant, it's always going to be a constant number of reads for the file. Super efficient. And if it's logarithmic, it's a very low riser as well. Not very, not very big. Constant tends to be a straight line. There are other types of orders which are really bad. For example, in login, it gets more reads as you get proportionally harder. And the worst case you can get is something called n factorial. It goes like this. So you can imagine anything at this end will not really work well in an operating system. So we always have to try to think, try to set this end to be efficient. And that applies to everything, calculations, you name it. So let's try it out in real life. I've got my Chris's laptop. I've got a 400,000 files and 178 gigabytes. So if this was stored contiguously, not likely, but you know, just imagine I had a single file, sorry, a single flat file system in my um, laptop. I would get about one. Just to read any block, I can read it once, that's it. Of course, the disk will probably get very, very fragmented as you saw in the animation earlier. If it's linked, it's very inefficient, order n is really bad. First block, I need one read. But if I want to read the 98th million block in a file, I need to read 98 million blocks. Literally, I'll be there forever. And if I'm indexed, um, this log k bar, this k stands for base 10 in this case. Most cases we do with binary, which is base 2, but it depends on the size of the number of inodes, number of blocks stored in an inode on the file. For example, it could be 5, it could be 10, it could be 3, who knows what it might be. Let's just take base 10, because it's easy to plug into our calculators. 178 billion, log base 10, turns out to be 11. 10 to the 11, that's what the figure is. So we only have 11 reads on average, which is pretty good. Let's try it with Google. Now, Google, we've got 15 exabytes. In other words, 15 times 10 to the 20 or roughly 150 million terabytes of data. Now, if it's contiguous, again, about one, maybe two, who knows what it is. But it's highly unlikely because Google has a distributed file system where you've got probably over 10 million disk drives, so it can't actually be one physical drive. There's no such thing as a 150 million terabyte drive out there. Not very likely to happen. Um, if it was chained, you had to read that data. If we need 987 billion to block on a file, we need 987 billion reads before we get there, which could be practically forever, days or weeks or months to read a file. But let's check out what's it like with indexed. We say log base 10 of 15 times 10 to the 20. What's that? Stick it in our calculator, try it out, try it out yourself. Well, it turns out to be roughly 10 to the 21 log base 10. Now, with logarithmics, you take the top bit, and it turns out to be 21. So you could have a super-sized file system called Google, and it takes 21 reads on average to read a block on any size file in the system, which is really, really impressive when you think of it. So obviously, index wins for big file systems, and that's why virtually every operating system out there in the world runs an index file system. Of course, as we get into larger and larger files, there are still issues on how to actually read those files because obviously we can't read 
10 million disks simultaneously. Or maybe we can. That's a bit of research to work on. So, that's it for file systems.